Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here with another video tutorial recorded exclusively for TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. Remember for the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips and tricks, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Today we're going to be looking at the 3D capabilities of Adobe Photoshop CS6 Extended. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the feature called the ground plane. Now, if you used the 3D capabilities in Photoshop CS5 extended, you may recall a trick using what was called the ground plane shadow catcher to allow you to create shadows when you are rendering your 3D image using a simulated surface, which was called the ground plane. In Photoshop CS6, the capability is taken to a new level, and the ground plane can not only catch shadows, but can also cast reflections, and in fact, you can see it while you're working in 3D. So you don't need to do a render to actually see the results. So let's try that out. We'll start with this text layer on a background, and I'm simply going to choose from the 3D menu, New 3D Extrusion, from selected layer. And Photoshop will offer to put me into the 3D workspace, which I recommend. So I'll say yes. Now here we have our 3D extrusion. And using the Move tool with the 3D Rotate tool active, we can move this around. And we can see that we have some extruded 3D text. And we have this grid, which is essentially the ground plane. Now as we move this around, and rotate the view, you can actually see some shadows in the back that are being cast on this ground plane. And we can control that by moving the light, which you see here in the foreground, this infinite light, which comes as a default with your 3D scene. So I'll put this back to its initial default location. And we'll simply go down in the 3D panel and click on infinite light. And with infinite light selected, we can move the light around. And you can see the shadows moving in the background. So that looks pretty good. But now we have additional capabilities. As I said, besides shadows, we can cast reflections as well. And the way we do that is by going into the 3D panel and choosing the environment, which is right at the top. And with the environment selected, we can look up here in the Properties panel. But we also have the ability here to control the opacity of the shadows. So we can make them softer or darker, lighter or darker. And right below this, you can see Reflections. And the default opacity for Reflections is 0. But if we crank this up a little bit, we can start seeing Reflections forming right below our text. So there we have, in a nutshell, the controls within the 3D ground plane controlling the shadows and the reflections. When we return to the scene view, the extras disappear, and we can see the shadow and the reflection effect. And if we switch to the Layers panel and deselect the 3D layer and choose the background, the ground plane disappears as well, and we can see the full effect. Now let's take a look at a little more ambitious use of this technique. We'll switch to a view of this lakeside, and in fact, we'll put some text right on top that says lakeside. We'll go ahead and extrude this 3D text just like before. And there we have our text, and it's extruded. And once again, we can move it around, and we can see that it is indeed 3D text, and it resides on the ground plane. Now what we're going to want to do is adjust this ground plane so that it matches the background image. So what we can do is just use our 3D Rotate tool and rock this ground plane down so that it looks like it's fading right into the background. And as soon as it becomes almost a part of our image, we know that we've got the perspective set up correctly. Now let's go ahead and once again go down to our infinite light and we'll move it around 
and cast a little bit of shadow on the water in this case rather than on the background. So that looks pretty good but remember we can adjust that shadow by choosing environment from the 3D panel and then here in the properties panel we can adjust the opacity. So we'll turn the opacity down just a little bit on the shadow and maybe crank the softness up and that'll give us a softer shadow. If we switch to scene view once again we can see the results. Now let's add a reflection. We'll go back to the environment and now we'll begin to bring in a reflection by increasing the opacity. And as we do you'll start to see the letters form in a reflection below the 3D text. Now if we go back to the scene view we can see that the reflection is in the water and in fact once again if we choose a non 3D layer we can now see the reflection in the water and the shadows being cast behind without any distractions. But this water is a little bit rough, it's got some ripples and a smooth reflection like this doesn't look very realistic. Now what we can do is to go back to that 3D layer and once again into 3D panels we'll choose environment and then in the properties panel we'll go just below opacity and here we have a control for roughness. If we bring the roughness up we can diffuse that reflection and make it a little bit rougher and just a small amount works wonders. Let's try bringing that up to about 4%. We'll go back to the scene and take a look and you can see already the reflection has started to roughen up and blend into the background a little bit more. So we'll go back to the layers panel, choose our background layer, and now we've got a nice effect. If you wanted to tweak it a little bit more, you could even go in here and add a layer mask and maybe come in with a brush with some black color and actually paint out some of the tips of the reflections just to let them fade out a little bit more. So there you have it, the 3D ground plane within Adobe Photoshop CS6 extended within the 3D capabilities of Photoshop. The techniques take a little getting used to, but they can help you to create very realistic composites. I hope you'll try them out. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography and Photoshop tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tip on Tip Squirrel.